Hello everybody, this is Dr. Christopher White and in this video we're going to take a few minutes just to have a look at how we can use our computer to complete the lab assignments. So a few people have emailed me telling me they're having issues with the online version of the lab manual. There are two main problems. Number one, the lab manual does not let you actually type text onto the page. And number two, people are finding it difficult to take measurements using the online version of the lab manual. So we need to get around both those problems. So how are we going to do it? So let's start with inserting text. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to bring up a document here. And we're going to pretend that this is the uh, lab manual. And we're going to pretend that the contents page here is the page that we're interested in. And so what I need to do is I need to get this page here and I need to put it into a program that will allow me to insert text. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to get the page so that it's all visible in my field of view. So I've got all the information I need. And then I'm going to hit the print screen button on my keyboard. So print screen. So I've just pressed it. And that's just taken a, a grab, a screen grab of my desktop. So then what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to a new Word document. And I'm simply going to paste the image. So I'm going to control V. And so there's the image I just took. Now notice how this is the screen you could see, and this is my second monitor that has my recording program onto it. So I have information on here that I don't want. So I've got to get rid of it. So I'm going to select the image. I'm going to go to Format, and then I'm going to go to Crop. And notice how we have these chunky black lines now around the edge of our image. When we move the position of these, it gets rid of the stuff that we don't want. We're cropping it away, we're getting rid of it. So all of this material here that I don't need. I'm just getting rid of it. Done. So that's actually what I want. And now I'm going to resize this image so it fits my page. There we go. And then I'm just going to center it. Okay. So now I have a, an image of the, the page that we're interested in. And then all I have to do is go to insert shapes text box. And then I can simply drop a text box in and type in my answer to the question. Done. Very simple. Okay, so the next problem we have to face is how do we take measurements? So I'm just going to close these down. So here's my desktop again. And I'm going to pretend that this is the image that we're interested in. So let's say we need to take a measurement of this image. And you might, you've probably seen this image already. This is one of the figures from exercise 11 from the lab manual. So let's get this image into a format where we can actually use it. So what I'm going to do is, once again, I'm going to hit print screen. I'm going to take a screen grab. Then I'm going to go to PowerPoint this time. And I'm going to paste the image. Once again, I have an image that contains a whole load of information that I do not need. So I'm going to go to Format, Crop, and then I'm going to move the black bars to once again get rid of all the information that is not required. There we go. So that's all the junk gone. So this is what I actually wanted. I'm just going to quickly resize this to the size of the slide there. Okay. So now I have my image. So now I need to take some measurements. So let's say for argument's sake that I want to take a measurement from here, the Rift Valley, to here, the start of the Gilbert Formation. So I need to take a measurement from there to there. How am I going to do that? Well, I'm going to do it by drawing a rectangle. So I'm going to go to Insert, Shapes, and I'm going to select Rectangle. And I'm going to draw a rectangle that is the, the length that I want. Now, I'm just going to make it a little bit larger for just a second. OK, so I'm going to zoom in a bit more now. There we go. OK, so here's my rectangle. To make my life a little bit easier, I'm also just going to get rid of the fill. So there we go. We can see what's going on behind it. Now, the first thing that you're going to notice is when you try and adjust your rectangle, you're going to notice that as you change the shape of it, it doesn't move smoothly. Notice how as you notice how as I'm extending the rectangle, it's kind of making that jumping motion. So it means that if I'm trying to take an accurate measurement, it's difficult because the computer is try well, the computer's trying to help me. So behind this image, there's a grid. You can't see it. But as I'm moving the rectangle, the computer is trying to be helpful, and it's trying to make the rectangle snap to that grid. 
So what I want is if I'm trying to take accurate measurements, I want to be in complete control of the size of the rectangle. So I'm going to do that by pushing down the Alt key on my keyboard. And then when I change the shape of my rectangle, you will notice how it's now a smooth motion. It's, the computer is no longer trying to snap the rectangle to the grid. So now I can simply move the rectangle, change its dimensions until I achieve exactly the measurement that I want. There we go. So the next question is, is, well, how do I use this to actually get a distance? Well, that's quite simple. I select the rectangle. I go to format and straight away, there it is. My rectangle is 5.58 centimeters in length. Now, if you guys are doing this and you have it set up for uh, the United States, it will obviously give you the measurements in inches. But of course, because this is a science, we will be using millimeters, centimeters, and meters. We use metric measurements. So you'll have to convert your imperial measurements into metric. And you'll actually need to do that. You know, it, it tells you to do that in the assignments as well. So, okay, so now we know our distance from here to here. So we've taken our measurement. Now, the other thing you're thinking is, well, hold on a minute, why are we using rectangles? Well, the nice thing about rectangles is you can draw the rectangle and then you can see this green circle here. This allows you to rotate the rectangle. So imagine we actually we were trying to take a measurement from, let's say, zero over to A. We want to know the distance from there to there. Well, the lovely thing about the rectangle is, is I can get the rectangle into the right position I can rotate it and then I can simply keep adjusting the rectangle. Now remember I'm holding down the Alt key as I do it so I can adjust the motion smoothly. And then I can simply just adjust the rectangle to the correct length. So in this case the rectangle is now 8.11 centimeters. So the distance from here to here is 8.11 centimeters. If you try doing it with a line, it doesn't work. You have to use the rectangle, okay? So the distance from there to there is 8.11 centimeters. Okay, so let's think, is there anything else we need to cover? Well, obviously then you can take all your measurements just using different rectangles. One more thing we need to think about is if we have two versions of our diagram, so let's just say we've got the, we've got the PowerPoint version and we also have a version here in our Word document. So you'll notice that the dimensions of the diagram in the Word document are different to the dimensions of the diagram in PowerPoint. Now, the most important thing to remember is, is once you've you know, decided to take the measurements using PowerPoint and you've gotten your image to the correct size, you cannot change its dimensions. Okay, you can't take a measurement like this and then suddenly think to yourself, oh wait, I need to make the image slightly smaller, adjust the size and then try and take another measurement. That means any measurements you take will not be consistent and you will get an incorrect answer. So number one, once you've decided, you know, once you've got your image to the correct dimensions, do not change it. The other thing is that the dimensions between the Word document and the PowerPoint will be different. So if I'm trying to work out the distance from here to here, obviously I need to use the scale bar. So if I'm going to try and use the scale bar, the one thing I should not do is measure the scale bar on here and use that as one measurement and then actually take the measurement of the distance using the diagram on PowerPoint because that's two different diagrams with two different dimensions and so that means the answer I get will be incorrect. So if I'm taking my measurements using a, a diagram like this on PowerPoint, I have to make sure I just take measurements from this diagram, okay? I don't use the diagram in the Word document, that's just in there for show. I would only actually be taking my measurements from this diagram here. And then all I have to do is once I've taken my measurements, I simply just have to put the answer into a text box. So, you know, let's just say for argument's sake that the length was, what, 8.1 centimeters. Done. Okay. So the most important thing is as long as you are consistent and you keep using the same picture to take the measurements for the question, you will get a consistent set of answers and as such, you will get the correct answer at the end.
okay if you start re you know adjusting the size of your image or using images in different programs that have different dimensions you are going to get incorrect answers okay so once you've gotten the image in powerpoint you've got it to the right size just use that image don't go changing its dimensions okay all right so i hope that helps everyone and then obviously once you've gotten your document put together in powerpoint save it and then obviously you can put it into the Dropbox on the class D2L page. All right, take care, everyone.